Okay, everyone. Uh, hello. Welcome to another presentation by me. I am without moderator for this presentation. So again, post questions and comments into the chat window uh, if you have any. But then please be patient while I scroll up and down through that chat looking for them. Okay, well, I imagine I'll get started now. So this is about the secret engines of CKs. So the default clinical pipeline is what most people are familiar with uh, when it comes to CTAs. Um, what it, it does is it detects and puts all of the text into a single section. It identifies sentences, simple tokens, parts of speech for words, uh, chunks multiple words together, identifies clinical events and anatomical mentions, and it will assert uh, certain attributes of those events, such as uncertainty or negation. So I presented earlier this morning a possible pipeline and it contains things like finding the location and finding co-references. And if you are only familiar with the default clinical pipeline, you are probably thinking, bull punky, Sean, CTAX does not do that, but it does. Okay, so there are a lot of other things that it can do. It can de detect multiple sections it can create paragraph splits. It can detect lists. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I mean by sentences for early 80s documents. Uh, it can detect degree of relations, location of relations. And some of the coolest and most recent things are temporal events, times, uh, which CMAC just spoke about temporal relations and co-references. So I'm only going to speak about a few of those, but uh, they are probably the most useful. So there are three splitting engines that are not in the default clinical pipeline, but are really useful. Uh, the BSV regex sectionizer has kind of a goofy name, however, it can annotate document sections, basically split apart the document by detecting section headers using regular expressions that you put in a bar separated value file. And when I say you put, that's because you can make your own. However, one does come by default with CTAGs. Another is the paragraph annotator, uh, which can split the document into different paragraphs. This sounds a little silly, but it actually is extremely useful in some cases when you need to specify things like, all right, a certain adverse event mentioned has to be within the same paragraph of a medication mentioned. If not, ignore it, even if they're in the same section or uh, the same document. The sentence annotator, or sorry, Sentence Detector Annotator BIO, or Begin, Inner, Outer. This is useful for documents in which new lines may not indicate sentence boundaries. Basically, uh, you have some clinical documents in possibly older EMRs, possibly newer EMRs, but they were entered by someone old school who just is used to hitting the carriage return or enter but uh, key every time they reach the um, edge of the screen. And the default sentence detector in CTEX will split those apart into different sentences. 
we've got another one that was a machine learning trained model and it will instead lump those together intelligently. So the BSV regex sectionizer, like I said, it can detect and create multiple sections within the document. On the left, you see a document. You can see headers like CCHPI, ROS, uh, past medical history, past surgical history, etc. Then we can have the sections identified. And this, by the way, this is a real document that you can find in the CTEX examples module. And by real, I mean, uh, it was made by someone who actually is familiar with clinical text and knows what they're doing, but it is not about a real person. Okay, so on the right, it actually split this apart into different sections. And I made a writer that uh, made this a little obvious by giving you the section ID and document text uh, that names the section followed by the actual section text. So we can see a section ID of history of present illness. That's the normalized section ID for the document text that was actually in the document on the left, CC slash HPI. And then the text that was in that document. You can see as you move down in the uh, output on the right, it has normalized IDs, review of systems, that it gave the document text ROS. Uh, past medical history happens to be the same ID as what was in the document, et cetera. So this actually does pretty well. And uh, sometimes these are very important to have. For instance, history of present illness or past medical history, you may want to take every mention in those sections and assign them the attribute of historically in the past or before the document was written. Whereas something like medications, which is a section further down the document, you might want to lean towards a temporal uh, existence of current. These are medications at the same time this document was written. Now, I'm mentioning some things that are actually in a later presentation by Jen Lin. I really advise you all to watch it. Uh, it's on adverse events and medications. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. Okay, next is the paragraph annotator. Again, this is pretty useful in splitting paragraphs. On the left, you can see the note that we had previously. Uh, I modified it a little so that it actually had obvious paragraphs. And on the right, you can see where the paragraph annotator split things apart, split apart the text into different paragraphs. To a human, this is obvious. To a tool like CTEX, this needs to be made obvious. And the sentence detector annotator, BIO. Again, this was uh, trained by machine learning. There's a model that uh, is in CTEX. By default, it works extremely well. So uh, what you see on the left is actually, again, some text in a fake note. And what you see on the right is, uh, as is written in blue, the default sentence detector and how it splits sentences. So you can see the very first line, sometimes taking a deep breath to make more room in a chest helps. And then it splits a sentence and continues with another sentence, the offending food go down. The next thing happens uh, in the next red marked box where it actually split a true text sentence into two sentences as far as he takes understands it. And I marked in red boxes as that continues further down. 
again, this is done because, because of an either EMR uh, method of storing a document or just the way that a clinician entered the text. Okay, now here is the output from the actual sentence detector annotator BIO. It is more of a lumper than a splitter in the words of its author. And you can see with all of the blue boxes, which correspond directly with the red boxes, that it has correctly lumped together uh, these lines of text, which have carriage return, you know, into a single sentence. For everything in a pipeline that continues and requires sentences, which is really a lot, a lot of components depend upon sentences being correct, this is extremely important. And a lot of people don't know it exists. Okay, so those were some splitting engines. Here are three relation engines. Relations are pretty powerful things. The location of relation extractor annotator has a ridiculously strong, uh, long name, but it does its job. It can annotate the locations of signed symptoms, disease disorders, procedures, and uh, you can use those down the line. The event time relation annotator and a similar one, the event event relation annotator. These annotate temporal relations between events and times, the first one, or events and other events, the second one. And the mention cluster co-reference annotator. This is what gives us the co-references between two mentions in the text that refer to the same real world entity. Okay, so here are some examples from the location of relation extractor annotator. On the left is document text, and I put into blue boxes some locations that, again, like other things, they're obvious to us. But to a computer, this is something that needs to be put together for it, and that's what the location of relation extractor annotator does. So we can see on the right that it got vein ligation located at the saphenous vein, moving down phlebectomy, bleh, phlebectomy located at the leg, moving further down DVT located at the saphenous vein and the right leg, et cetera. These are useful things to have. All right, some of our temporal relation annotators text on the left, what it actually pulled out on the right. We got complaints today, and it says, okay, today contains complaints. We have history significant for mild intermittent asthma, and it says history contains asthma. Again, with at this time, contains allergies. Uh, I should point out that the event time relation annotator uh, uses any time expression. So, Today, it, uh, it sees as a time expression, but if you had March 13th, it will also use that. So the relations that it actually identifies, I listed in blue below, they are before, after, contains, and overlaps. And the mentioned cluster co-reference annotator. Text on the left, blue boxes, green boxes and yellow boxes. I use different colors uh, basically because there are different co-references. On the right, things that are in chains. I didn't bother to mark all of the text for GERD on the left because uh, there are six mentions and it would just get too clustered. But you can see the blue box on, on the left, her mother and her mother in two different places. But the co-reference annotator recognizes that they're in the same chain. They're the same thing. Uh, the same with the drug and the same with uh, disease disorder, I suppose. Okay. So those are, I think, the six 
most useful annotators that are not in the clinical pipeline, the default clinical pipeline, and uh, most people don't even know that they exist. Some honorable mentions, the doc time rel annotator, events, event relativity to the document creation time. Uh, in other words, if the document was created yesterday and there are a few mentions within it, it will say whether they are before or after the time the document was created. If the document was created three years ago, it still identifies whether events were doc, uh, created before or after at the same time, et cetera, the creation of the document. It doesn't know when the document was written, but it still tells you important information about the events in a temporal manner. The HTML text writer, um, it could use a lot of improvements, but it saves extracted information at HTML. It is good, I think, for creating output that you can pass to someone who doesn't want to look at formatted output with lists and tables and uh, you know odd looking markup. Instead, it has markup in a, in a web readable file, HTML, and anyone can open it and see what is underlined, et cetera. Uh, the fire JSON file reader and file JSON file writer. Another thing people don't know about is the CTAKE's ability to use fast healthcare interoperability resources. This is, I think, the latest Health Level 7 or HL7 standard for exchanging information. Um, and it's kind of nice to be able to use it. Okay, doc hand. So now you're, you're probably wondering to your, Self. Uh, okay, these are all pretty neat, but I'm not going to go through and look for them and figure out how to add them to a pipeline and all that. So, DocHand. It's an installation wizard tool. It's one little jar file. You double click and it starts up. It requires Java on your machine, but it does not require Subversion, Apache Maven, or anything else. It can build you a custom pipeline. It can build you a Docker file or a like local binary installation. Uh, the Docker file also has a demo REST page uh, that you can use. It is not as functional as uh, what will be presented in another talk about a CTAX REST module, but it's kind of cute. The local binary starts the Piper file submitter GUI. Um, if you haven't used it, it's kind of neat. If you want more information about it, like a lot of these things, uh, you can find it on the CTAKES wiki. So DocHand, what does this look like? All right, so it's a wizard. Start with one, move to two, three, four, and five. So number one, uh, you just select your installation type. Do you want a local installation or a REST server bu Docker bundle? And it's not really a REST server, it's just a Docker bundle with a demo REST. Number two, you can type whatever description you want for your pipeline. This is going to be a comment in your pipeline file. You'll probably never see it, but you know, could be nice to have. Number three, this is probably the most important panel. You get to select your pipeline features. These are the features. I did not name them after components. Uh, it's easier to read sections. I want a single section or I want multiple sections and go with that as a choice rather than the names of the actual uh, annotator classes. But as you can see, you can get single sections, multiple sections, you can split sentences in the different ways. You want the simple, uh, which, you know, may have mistakes, or do you want to use the BIO annotator? Do you want paragraphs or not? Do you want lists or not? Some of these, if you click on them, it will automatically select other uh, features. For instance, if you select entities, it will automatically select tokens. You have no choice. It's just going to get those. 
So for this one, I added in events times. Those are required for the event time annotator, event relations, locations, co-references. So we have basically all of the annotators to get different types that I have presented throughout this uh, little talk. Number four, pipeline outputs. Now, you know, they're different outputs. You can do fire, HTML, text properties, XMI, a list of GUIs, and a run summary is just uh, something that says you're finished. Here's how long it took to initialize. Here's how long it took to process each node. You know. And finally, there's this summary. It tells you what you chose for the installation, what description you wrote, all of the features that you selected, and the different pipeline outputs that you selected. You click Finish, and then you're good to go. So last, uh, this slide with contacts and more info. Write questions. If not in this chat right now, then write questions, comments to the uh, different lists, the dev list and user list. Please check our CTEX website. And the most comprehensive information right now is on the CTEX wiki. Most comprehensive, not completely comprehensive. So you, if you can't find it on the wiki, write your question on the dev list or user list. That's it. Are there any questions? Oh, good Lord. OK, let me know if this is the correct chat. I guess every talk has a separate session. Attendees need to switch, I guess. OK, I'm going to assume that it is. OK. Is it possible to have two dictionary lookups, one with window 3 and another looking at a different dictionary with window 2? Huh. Right now, it is not, but that's a pretty good question. Um, what you could do is you could create one dictionary with the minimum span of three for an entry and another dictionary with a minimum span of two. However, it would definitely be easier to specify it somewhere else. I'll have to think about that. Good question. Are there any wish, uh, engines I wish CTAKES had? That's a long list, I think. Um, good Lord. There are a lot of preprocessors that I wish you had. There are a lot of postprocessors, and by that I mean, you know, different writers that I wish it had. Uh, as far as annotation engines, there are a lot of things. Uh, I, the biggest one that's coming to mind right now is the ability to do word sense disambiguation at an intelligent level. Um, I think that would really help with named entity recognition or event lookup or dictionary lookup, whatever you want to call it. Because oftentimes, multiple events or mentions are found for the same uh, overlapping annotation in the text. And sometimes they're just ridiculous and out of context. Having a word sense disambiguation engine would really improve a lot of scores. Or it would improve accuracy of CTAKE's output. OK, doing that has performance issues. From Peter, what does that mean? Oh, are you? Ah, back to the double dictionary. Yes, the more dictionaries you add, the more uh, lookups have to be made. So that's pretty obvious. Let me check. 
check the time really quickly. Okay, we have a lot of time left, so get creative with your questions. The world is your oyster. Oh, ask anything you want. Though I'm not an expert on cheetahs. Ah, Doc Hand is new. Great. So I should have announced this in the beginning. Right now we are using a CTAX released version of 4, and it is three years old, maybe, and we really need to put out a version 5 release. If anyone can help us do that, please volunteer. We need testers, uh, we need documenters, uh, we need bug fixers, all of that. If you can do anything, uh, you know, get active. Okay, so Doc Hand is relatively recent. It's been in uh, CTAG's trunk, you know, the development version, for a few months. Um, I have not really made a big deal about it. I haven't, you know, publicized it at all, really, um, because I didn't want people to start using it right away and report a bunch of bugs. Uh, it is kind of limited in its capabilities, so I also didn't want people to start making a lot of requests. Uh, but I hope to make a big deal about it when CTAX 5 is released, because I think it's a useful tool. I haven't recently found any bugs, um, you know. If everyone likes it, then definitely let me know. Okay, has anyone tried to couple WordNet hieronyms with lookup as a kind of a better limitizer? Not that I know of, but it's very possible that someone has. If you have, if anyone out there has, please, you know, post something in the chat. Link to GitHub code, you know, link to a publication, etc. Okay, what about integration of neural models? And do you like clear TK? Good Lord, that's loaded. Um, neural models, uh, Timothy Miller, Chen Lin, Gurgana Svoba, post something about that. As for ClearTK, I'll tell you what, um, I think it's an okay framework upon which to build, uh, but I do think that it has some shortcomings, it has some performance issues, um, you know, whatever. I've made wrappers to go around it that help with those things, but okay. Is there a roadmap plan for implementing transformer-based NER? Uh, not that I have, but if anyone else has a plan, uh, post it in the chat and we can try to talk about it or uh, post it on the dev list or user list. And hopefully, Ethan, you are on one of those and we can all take this offline okay blah, 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 blah. ah okay c takes is a layer either above or below uema how much is specific to the clinical domain uh, all of the um, machine learning trained models are specific to the clinical domain uh, the dictionary lookup uses clinical terms that it gained from the UMLS, which is the Unified Medical Language System. It comes from uh, 
clinical or medical vocabulary such as RxNorm or SNOMED CT or Loink. Uh, so really from beginning to end, I'll, not everything is specific to the clinical domain, but uh, if I had to put a number at it, I'd say about 75%. And really in terms of uh, the important annotators, probably 90%. Okay. Uh, we earlier had discussions about implementing patient history relationship to a person and named entity identification and narratives. Any updates? Um, yeah, so I think patient history relationship to a person would be uh, great to have. I think that's another thing that would be important um, and should be in any list of uh, CTAKE's priorities. I'm not sure where it would lie, though. Um, but yes, being able to say, uh, you know, the mother had this disease uh, and not the actual patient itself, and she had it whenever. Um, you can do that to an extent with CTAKES right now, uh, but it, I think, has not been a major goal. So refinement has not been done. Okay, uh, plans to provide a bridge between, okay. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about funding, but, um, Funding is always great. We need it at uh, Boston Children's Hospital, the CHIP group. But apparently in CHIP, we've talked about uh, building a bridge between CTAKES and neural libraries. And I, I think maybe that uh, refers to the Python uh, neural libraries. And I will actually talk about a little on that on Thursday. Uh, aha. Is there a more specific answer to where we can find a roughly comprehensive list of engines? No, <laughs> not at all. If you're a developer, probably the best thing to do would be to go into an IDE that can search for class names uh, and search for um, abstract JCAS, was it abstract JCAS annotator? And once you hit that, uh, look for everything that overrides it. But that's going to give you a very long list. And unfortunately, some of those things have been deprecated, but not marked as such. So uh, really, it is something that should be done. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the last thing in the chat is um, Jorgana Savova says, uh, if interested, she can post in the chat links uh, papers describing and evaluating some of the transformer style methods for temporal relations. Um, this chat is going to close very soon. However, uh, I think those would be of interest, not just to everyone here, but everyone that's on the developer list. So. Uh, that would probably be a good thing to post on the developer list for posterity. Let's see, how much time do I have? 2.15. All right, so I'm kind of sort of running low on time. The truth is I'm giving the next presentation and were this not a strange platform, I would just keep this session open uh, and keep talking. But since we apparently have to leave this, go back to the sessions uh, panel and click on another thing, I can't just leave this open and answer questions forever. But I will remain here for another 
few minutes to answer any final questions. All right, I will try to answer the question of uh, the possibility to ch save a chat stream of a session. I do not know of any way to do that, um, but I'm not the only person here. So if anyone else knows, uh, please post it. Otherwise, this is supposedly all being recorded and uh, hopefully this chat will be available on the recording later on. OK, everybody, I'm going to leave and enter the next session presentation. Okay, bye.